Quantum Astrophysics Part 2B1 The Light Cone of Time To depict the mathematical concept of a sum over histories for the motions made by all particles and waves since the original formation of the cosmos in the Big Bang, we picture the singularity of the local universe as a sphere which does not and will not expand, but which merely grows more complex on its surface. We see above a light cone is simply a core sample from the upper crust of our universe where we dwell within the thin film of the space-time continuum toward the core of the figurative sphere of the universal singularity which we call the Big Bang event. The Big Bang core of our spherical space-time continuum signifies the beginning of time, where time is measured by the speed of light in a void, called C, used to measure space-time in light years. Around a depth inside our universal core of 18 billion years ago, the Big Bang began the expansion or complexification on the surface of our current cosmic continuum. The modern graph of the light cone sum over histories of our present universe, the continuum we dwell in below the speed of photons in a vacuum, that is the surface of space-time, shows also the alteration to the light cone core sample and its expansion rate over time caused by the differentiation from pure thermal radiation of the four elemental forces around one Planck time following the Big Bang. As mentioned in a prior section of these lectures, the proper order for their division is following the Big Bang, gravity, electromagnetism, fission, and fusion followed by the counting of the first Planck time of our cosmic existence. In this depiction, we show the universal expansion rate as a combination of all three possible forms for its geometry. One, flat, meaning perpetual expansion. Two, round, meaning perpetual stationary space. Or three, hyperbolic or saddle-shaped meaning an open geometry that results in repeating cycles of big bangs, expansions, contractions, and implosions. On the far right we see the big bang. The light cone sweeps downward in a conical arc shaped like a horn or a cornucopia. The first division signifies the first formation of gravity, followed by electromagnetism, followed by fission, followed by fusion. The last division occurred either at one Planck time after the creation or sometime since the division of the elements, and is signified as critical mass, the point at which the expanding universe reaches maximum stasis point and begins metastasizing the complexity on its surface. In the upper left, we see a cross-section of our current universe symbolized by a sphere inside a sphere, or a hypersphere, with twin toroids on either side between the inner and outer sphere. The inner sphere is our present universal space-time continuum below the speed of light. The twin toroids on the left and right of it signify black hole pairs emitting from a central wormhole are contained above the speed of photons but below the limit of time-space which is defined as the exterior of the multiverse formed of all n possible multiple world lines diverging as parallel dimensions. Quantum Astrophysics Part 2 B 2 Cosmology The Big Bang to the Present Let us begin with the Tau Sub Dao Tesseract of Time it is called Dao sub Dao because when one extends a number line outward from the Big Bang and counts off increasingly more infinite number sets, the most infinite set of numbers one can count to is comprised of the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet repeated twice, once as a numeral 
and once as a participle, subtended to the final sum, to denote it as having been multiplied by itself, as well as to create a squared representation of it, which takes shape in the form of the tesseract of all tachyons over time, the measuring device superseding in a perfect but unachievably ideal form the entire cosmic cycle from our current multiverse to the nulliverse and back through another Big Bang. Genesis says the cosmos was created in seven days. Here we see the six scale levels of astrophysics we will be discussing, and the lowest level, our own planetary system, will be discussed in more detail in a subsequent lecture. For now, let us view these, and then return to each to go over them all more thoroughly. Thus, we begin with the Tau sub Tau Tesseract structure encompassing eternity, and we next start to descend inward toward the center of its core. As mentioned, the title of the Tau sub Tau Tesseract derives from a form of counting transfinite sums on a number line. This can be done by examining varying types of number sets. Natural numbers begin with one and count up. Counting numbers count up also, but include zero. Integers count up and down from zero, including negative and positive, whole and fractional numbers. Irrationals include imaginary, transcendental, and certain square root numbers. However, all these number sets have one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning each counts an equally infinite sum of possible numbers, and that none counts more sums than any of the others. If you superimposed all these sets onto one another, they would form a single cohesive whole exactly equal to each of its individual parts. In short, you cannot add them to one another to increase the infinite number sum of these sets count two by adding or multiplying one by another. Thus, these four number sets, the naturals, counting, integers, and irrationals, combined are called the infinite set of all rational numbers. Thus, the set of all rational number sums is denumerable with an infinite sum set. We can call this fifth number sum set of all rational numbers the sum of all the other sets combined, a fifth dimension, hyperspace, made of a fifth element, tachyons, above the other four dimensions of space-time and elementary forces in our own cosmos. The four forces of space-time, plus the fifth element of faster-than-photon metaforms from beyond, but that pass invisibly through, our cosmos, comprise the form of the multiverse of parallel dimensional baby universes formed outside the vacuum speed of photons by black holes inverting matter energy within our own cosmos into dark energy and antimatter without. The maximum amount of matter our cosmos can contain, called critical mass, occurred following the division, at one Planck time following the Big Bang, of the four elements. During the earliest stellar phases, when the first black holes began to form. Following critical mass, the universe was divided between the cosmic continuum of matter-energy within space-time and the multiverse of tachyonic parallel dimensions beyond time-space. Our present universe is defined as follows. Space extends in time outward from Earth around 16 billion light-years in all directions. Below the speed of light, we see our own local universe defined as a complex pattern within an expansion of the original singularity, a network of galaxies aligning along filaments between vast voids of empty space. However, beyond the speed of photons, this appearance is revealed as merely an illusion, such that, in the last 16 billion years, all the furthest galaxies from us would have already been consumed into their core black holes. Thus, we find that our own local universe is simultaneously expanding, 
the voids, and contracting, burning out stars into massive black holes, and that as this occurs, more matter is converted into energy than vice versa, which will eventually result in a total evaporation of our present cosmos into a conceptual cosmos of pure tachyonic energy called a nulliverse. When the last star in our cosmos has been swallowed up through a final supermassive black hole, the multiverse of baby universes surrounding us now will metastasize into a pure 1D singularity, and the cycle will repeat the original Big Bang event. Quantum Astrophysics Part 2 B. 3. Black Holes and Wormholes We can look at our present universe as an expansion of entropy outward from a core P instanton-sized 1D singularity measured along an axis of infinite time. We would exist on a small dot on the surface of this model, and would be able to observe various effects occurring from our present vantage point, some of which would affect the space below the speed of light, and some of which would project beyond now into the future of cosmic time. Both would be equally observable, despite the present moment being the surface of the space-time continuum upon which we exist. We would simply have to be able to predict effects based on a view including a dimension greater than light years of space-time measured by photons moving at the speed of light. Our own position on this surface is furthest from wormholes within the voids between intergalactic filaments, closer to the gravity wells of the intragalactic black holes that link by one pole the core singularity of our own local universe, and, by the other pole, the core singularity of a unique baby universe that bubbles off faster than photons into the future. Our own point of view from here on planet Earth is closest within this cosmic model to a moment of alignment between our own spiral galaxy, the Milky Way, with our nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda. As their black hole core's poles approach overlapping alignment, so too does our own sun align with the Milky Way's core, as do our planets sometimes all align. When two galaxies' core black hole's poles align, such as our own Milky Way is currently moving toward relative to Andromeda, there is an alignment between them along a shared axis of tachyonic energy released by the black hole's poles. This effect forms a wormhole between the two galactic core's black holes. When this happens, a large amount of gravity moves between the two galaxies, causing a warping of the photon surface of visible space-time. When this occurs, photons will become invisible, and the illusion they transmit which we currently see as real, will disappear to reveal the true depth of time beyond our present perception of space. In the event of such an intergalactic gravitic alignment, such as that soon to occur between the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies, a wormhole forms in the deep space void between the galaxies. This occurs due to the alignment of the poles of the black hole core of one galaxy with those of another. The poles of intragalactic core 